Hello everybody, and welcome back to this video on Byte of Linux. Now in this one, I'll be showing you how to install backslash Linux Olaf, and then I'll be doing a review of it. Some background information about backslash Linux. So it is an Indian based distribution. It is based off of Ubuntu, so you get all your features from there, such as the package manager, but it still has some things that are different, which I'll show you in the review. So let's go over to backslash linux.in and here it will bring us to the home page so you can see that they are not currently on distro watch so i just recommend quickly clicking that and then scrolling down to where it says backslash linux right over here and just clicking review from there so now what we want to do is click download now and you can see all the information here so, as I said, the current version is Olaf. They actually have all of their names from the Disney movie Frozen. You can see here that's Elsa and then Anna. That's pretty cool. And they have two main desktop environments. Their flagship one or their base one is KDE. And then they have Mate as a secondary one. Now, they actually did have GNOME, but it's currently discontinued. And that's fine. So, I'll be reviewing the KDE version, so you can click download now. And here we have some system requirements. So you should have a 32-bit or 64-bit BIOS compatible computer, a recommended CPU of an Intel Core 2 Duo or AMD Athlon X2, at least 786 megabytes of RAM, and at least 128 megabytes of graphics memory. So you can scroll down all the way to the bottom and you have all your download options. So they do have these two main ones over here, and then you also have a torrent option. So you can just click this source forge or mega or whatever you want. And the download should start automatically. You can see here that it is 1.7 gigabytes. So that will take a while, and I will resume the video with it booted up and start doing the installation tutorial. Now when you first boot up your computer, you might get this screen right here. And what you can do is just simply select live boot the system. So here I am fully booted up and you can simply just double click on this install backslash Linux icon right here and the installer should open up. So this is very similar to the Ubuntu installer because I mean it is based off of Ubuntu so you can expect that. So the first thing that you want to do is select your language, so English, continue, and then you can select these options here. I usually just check both of them. This one will download updates while installing, and this one will install third-party software. Choose whichever ones you want. Continue. Now next, you want to set up your partitioning scheme. So you can either use your entire disk or manually set partitions. I have my disk empty, so I'm just going to use the entire disk here. You can see that it says guided use entire disk. Click install now. And it will give you a warning, make sure that these partitions are fully backed up if you have any important stuff on there, and hit continue. Now it is installing in the background, and for now you can just select your time zone, so here I am, continue, and then select your keyboard layout. So there's lots of different ones here, and just select the one that you're looking for, and click continue, and that's it. So you can just leave it to install, and I'll resume the video when it is at 100%. Okay, so the installer has finished now, and what you can do is click restart now, take out your USB or CD, and boot up from the hard drive. Okay everyone, so here we have it booted up and installed to our hard disk, and the first thing that I'm going to do is look at the pre-installed applications. So we can go over here in the top corner and click on this thing right here, and it'll show us the application menu. So for development we have document browser, interface designer, and translation tool. In games, we just have Mahjong. Graphics, we have color chooser. And then we have document viewer, image scanning application, KDE image viewer, hmm, wonder what this is. So when we click on it, we can actually just see that this is just Gwen view. They just simplified it down and just made it KDE image viewer so that it's easier to understand. Then you have a paint program. Under internet, it comes pre-installed with the Chromium web browser. Remote desktop client, mail client, BitTorrent client, see what the mail client is, and it looks like Thunderbird, so that's neat. And the BitTorrent client, 
is actually KTorrent. Great. Now under multimedia, we have our Kodi Media Center pre-installed, VLC Media Player, some music player, recording software, webcam booth, which I guess is just some kind of camera, and then YouTube app. So let me just click on that. That's pretty interesting. I've never seen this. Okay, so this looks like a YouTube client. Now let's just look up a channel or something. So let me just change this to channel. Why don't we do Byte of Linux? And I'm not really sure what happened here, just saying air transferring something here. Let's just try that again with a different channel. And I'll just look up Linux and see what pops up. So there is an error with this mini tube application. It might be working for you, but for me, it just doesn't come up with any results. Now under Office, it comes pre-installed with the WPS Office Suite, as well as a document viewer, PDF viewer, and calendar. Now under settings, you just have your basic setting applications like package manager, drive manager, all that kind of stuff. Under system, you have your dolphin file manager that's pre-installed with KDE. Then you have system monitor, all the basics. Under utilities, we have a file organizer, text editor. Let's see, this one is Kate. So that's again, the pre-installed one. And then you have an app launcher. So let me just see what this is. Click on that. And wow, this is a kind of like browser kind of thing. This reminds me of GNOME or actually Mac OS. So they've got that going here and you can just select a file here or sorry, icon there. Let me just hit escape. Now you have an archiving tool, calculator, character selector. In the dock here, it comes pre-installed with the Latte dock and actually did a review of that dock in this video right here, it's up here. So make sure to watch that. But they chose to use the Latte dock and that makes sense because it works very well with the KDE desktop environment. And it actually is looking really nice with backslash Linux. So we also have a maps application, a screenshot utility, and a virus scanner. So let's just see what this is all about. And I'm not sure what the name of the application is. It just says virus scanner. And here I guess you can just have some settings here, whitelist some applications. It's not working for me currently. It's pretty buggy and the fonts aren't rendering properly. I'm not sure if this is actually part of the application or just a problem with my computer, but this is pretty buggy. Now, the final section in the application launcher is our power session. These are just our standard like lock, logout, switch user tools. So those are the applications. There aren't too many pre-installed. I feel like it's a good amount for, you know, beginners or just users that just want to get work done. Now the next thing I'm going to be looking at is the hardware usage. So we can go over to our application menu and search up KSysGuard. That is the name of the system monitor or task manager. And here we can see that I am using currently about 30% to 40% of my CPU and this is on a dual core Intel i5 at 3.2 gigahertz. So that's pretty reasonable. Now with our memory, we are using 0.59 gigabytes of memory, which is extremely good for a distribution that's based on the KDE desktop environment. And with network history, we have nothing. So that's good. So it is pretty light weight, and I like that because lately there have been some other ones that are using just an insane amount of resources. So now I'm going to be looking at the package manager and I'm going to try to install an application. So if we go over here and just look up software, you can see that we have a software center over here, software and updates, a discover section, and a synaptic package manager. So let me just click on discover, see what this is about. And this just looks like a basic KDE software center. So I'll just search for something like GIMP because it is not pre-installed. We can see here in graphics. So I can just go to GIMP. And here it is. So we just click on that. And we can click install. Enter in our root password. And it should properly install. So up here we can see the size, the license, the version, and some screenshots in the description. So it's good. It shows you everything. So it's currently installing now and it's done. So I'm just going to launch it up and see if it properly installed. I'm just gonna search up GIMP and here it is. 
so it looks like everything loaded properly here. We got everything going well, and there is no bugs. Now, if I look here in the top panel over here, you can see that there is a update button here. So if we just hover over that, I can see that there are updates available. I'm just gonna click on this, and if I click update, it will start updating all my packages. You know, this is also in the software center, so you can just go down here to the left side and click, click the update button. And you can see all the different updates that are going to be applied. And if I just hit update all, it'll just update all of them in one shot. So updating through the software center works flawlessly. And of course, since it is based off of Ubuntu, we can go into our um, terminal emulator console and just type in apt. You can see here that the current version is 1.2.20 and you can install and update anything through here. So the package management system on backslash Linux is excellent and works great. So the final thing that I'm going to review with backslash Linux is the customizability. So if we go over here into our system settings by just clicking this icon down here and go under appearance, we can see the workspace theme. So it just comes with the essentials here. We have Breeze and Breeze Dark. Under desktop theme, we actually have some extras, including Arc Dark Gray, Mac OS X with a K, Air, the three Breeze themes, and Oxygen. With cursor theme, again, we have the basics, Breeze and Breeze Snow. And again, with splash screen, you can set either to have a KDE logo or nothing. With the color scheme, you have quite a lot here. By default, it uses this one. Hit apply. Now the basic fonts that are preloaded are the Noto fonts and the fixed width font being hack. Now backslash does use their own icon theme, which is inspired by the Law Capitain pack, which gives it that macOS feel. And you actually have some other ones here. And finally, with application style, you can just set some other settings, including GTK based applications. So I'm just gonna exit out of this and look at some of the wallpapers that are pre-installed. So I'm just gonna right click on the desktop and click configure desktop. So starting at the top, we have some branded backslash wallpapers with the text at the bottom. Those look pretty nice. And if you scroll down even more, you have some flat and minimal looking wallpapers, which I'm a big fan of, and really give a modern look to your desktop. So overall, I'm very pleased with the customizability with backslash Linux. Of course, you can just download more stuff, but there are there is a lot of options preloaded, which is great. So everyone, that's backslash Linux Olaf. Now, my thoughts on this are that it is a pretty nice distribution. It really does remind me of a base KDE Neon or Kubuntu installation. There isn't too much going on here with a few extras like wallpapers and themes. Now, the customization on this, as I said before, is great, but one area where I do feel that this lacks a lot is the software. So if you saw before, earlier in this video, some of the applications that I launched didn't even load up correctly, it didn't fetch the data correctly, stuff like that. So they could work on this a little bit more, but apart from that, the package management is great and the system usage is great also. So everyone, if you liked this video, make sure to give it a like, comment down below, and make sure to subscribe to stay tuned for more Linux distribution reviews. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video. I'm <laughs> sorry.